Hello, this is Simon from Tokyo Productions and in this tutorial we're going to be looking at creating this interesting title effect in Motion 5. We've got some letter shapes that get cut out into the metal background using a welding torch type affair. And I think this should make for quite a fun tutorial. We're going to start this tutorial in Adobe Illustrator. Uh, and the reason for that is we need to create some uh, create the outlines. I've got some text typed in here in Illustrator. You can of course use any imported EPS or Illustrator file. You don't have to type text in. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to use a free script that you can download following the link that you can see on screen now. And it's called Export as Motion Shape. If you follow the link, you'll find an old MacBreak Studio episode where Mark Spencer talks about it. And there's also a link to uh, download the script. So I'm going to take my text, I'm going to right click, and I'm going to create outlines. And then I need to ungroup the letters. And I'm going to right click on the W and release compound path. And then I'm going to file, run the script, export as motion shape. You can only put these shapes on your desktop for some annoying reason, but um, that's fine. You can tidy this up later. So type W and export it. I won't do this because I've already done it. And you need to do that for each letter. Plus you need to do it also for the two parts of the D, the outside outline and the inside one, because if you imagine the cutter needs to cut both of those separately. OK, so that's the boring part done. Let's skip on over to um, Motion and get started. I'm going to import those into a new group, File Browser. There they are on my desktop. Import them. If you don't have Illustrator, that's not the end of the world, because what you could, for example, do is type some text in Motion and then use the Bezier tool to trace around those outlines. They don't have to be that accurate because obviously it's a it's a rough looking effect. So you could work it that way. So now I'm going to turn on my grid and just very quickly line up these letters. So that's our text lined up. Uh, for some reason they've come in short. So I'm going to the, go to the end of my timeline which I've set to 850 frames and I'm going to, having selected the group, I'm going to press O to trim it out to the end. And then I'm going to shift select all of those Zoom in a little bit so we can see what we're doing. Uh, come to the shape properties, and I'm going to be changing them all in one go. Uh, I'm going to set the outline mode to airbrush, which will open the brush color and type in the value that I know that I want. Red is 1, green is 0.75, and blue is 0.25. Then I'm going to set the width to 8 and the spacing to 15. And I'm going to come to my stroke properties and I'm going to use the jitter option to create a rough outline. So I'm going to set the value to 90 and you'll see that that's roughened up the shape. Now we need to animate uh, the letters writing on. So I'm going to come to frame 150 and uh, for each of these I'm going to set a last point offset keyframe for frame 150, come back to the start and make them all zero at the start. And now they all draw on over those 150 frames. Now the other thing I want to do is I want to set the um, start point for each of these uh, animations. At the moment they are, they're, all, they're all just the default start points of the shape and I don't like that. I want them all to take place in the top left hand corner. So I'm going to double click the shape um, and set start point and I'm going to use the top left hand corner in each case. So now they all animate on from that corner uh, which is what I want. Now we want to offset uh, the letters in time so they all appear one after the other. So I'm going to select my E I'm going to come to what frame 150 and I'm going to use shift square bracket, shift forward square bracket, and that will move that letter to start at frame 150. And I'll just go through and do it with the other letters. 
L at 300, moving on 150 frames each time, D1 at 450 to 600, and D2, shift, square bracket. And so now they will all write on in sequence. Now I want to just duplicate that group, letters, dark letters, and the dark letters I'm going to put behind, and then I'm going to shift select the dark letters, and I'm going to change this color to black. The width I'm going to turn up to 16, and if we zoom in, you can see that that's created a, a sort of darkened outline where the torch has been. Uh, and I'm going to set the blend mode to multiply. Notice how useful it is to be able to shift select items and change all their properties at once. Obviously they have to be the same type of item, but it's, um, it's a really handy thing to know. So now we are going to add some sparks um, and I'm going to make a new group. And I don't normally do this. I don't, I don't like to build my particle emitters from scratch, but this time I'm going to actually use some of the built-in ones. And I'm going to come to Pyro and use Blurry Sparks and apply that to my group. And I do want to make some changes because I don't really like uh, the look of that too much. So we're going to come to the Blurry Sparks uh, I'm going to set the birth rate to 200 and the life I'm going to increase to 1.75 and the speed to 50. I just want some slightly more interesting sparks and the gravity. Um, I don't want them falling as fast so I'm going to set that to 400. And then I'm going to come to the particle cell and twirl open its color over life um, and make some changes here as well. Uh, this color, instead of 34, I'm going to set it to 90. Um, so they stay bright for much longer. Zoom out a little bit and come back to my emitter. Come down to the bottom and I want to change the scale to 80 and the scale randomness to 100. Now I want those uh, particles to follow the path of the W. So how am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to come to my behaviors, basic motion, and select motion path. Um, and in the path shape, I'm going to select geometry. And then it's really simple. All I need to do is come to my letters and drag the W into that well for the geometry. And that follows along. It doesn't quite follow along as we'd like because the motion path is longer than the time, the write-on time. So we can just fix that by coming to frame 150, select the motion path and hit O to crop it. And now it does follow along. And the other thing it does, does that we don't want is it carries on emitting sparks long after it's arrived. And in order to fix that, we're going to come to the particle cell. I'm going to, at frame 150, I'm going to keyframe the birth rate and the birth rate randomness. I'm going to step forward one frame and turn, the, turn those both down to zero. So now as we hit frame 150 they will stop emitting and just fall away. Very nice. And finally we're going to set the blend mode for the layer to add. And at this point I want to turn on a light just to um, in order that I can adjust the lighting properties of the various elements. Some of them I want to be lit and some I don't. So if I turn on the light, that'll enable the lighting properties. So I can come to the lighting tab, which is now available, and turn off the lighting for the sparks, because obviously they want to be as bright as possible. Uh, I'll show you with it. In its default stage, they get lit, and, the, and obviously in the real world that doesn't happen. And I want to do the same thing with my letters, uh, because they need to be bright. So I'm going to take the group, and I'm going to turn off the inherited lighting. And now those punch out as well. Uh, and now we can move on and create some smoke. So I'm going to come to this layer again. And again, I'm going to use a built-in uh, particle emitter. This time it's going to be smoke. And it's going to be smoky variation. And I want to make a few changes to that as well. Uh, first of all, I'm going to increase the emission range to 360 and come to the particles and I want the smoke to last longer so I'm going to increase the life 
to two and I'm also going to reduce the speed to six and I'll do the same thing on the other cell because this is made up of two two separate cells and for some reason the uh, particles come in a little bit short so I'm going to go to frame 400 uh, and select the uh, emitter and hit O so they carry on emitting and don't cut off um, and then we're going to do the same trick at frame 150 uh, with the two particle cells keyframe it move forward reduce the birth rate and birth rate randomness to nothing go back keyframe the second one go on a frame and reduce them to nothing uh, and now at frame 150 it will stop emitting I'm going to remove these two gravity effects from the particles cells and to the overall group I'm going to come to simulations and use wind and I'm going to twirl open the velocity type minus 50 on X and plus 50 on Y so that it will drift up towards the top left and now obviously it wants to follow the outline of the letter again and in order to do that we're going to link it come to its position add parameter behavior link and we're going to link it to the blurry sparks uh, and there you go it's all attached looking really quite nice the smoke I'm not going to exclude from the lighting because I want it to appear to disappear into the shadows and that's going to be more convincing I'm going to do a couple more things in this group I'm going to create a bright hot tip which I'm not getting yet um, from the particles themselves so I'm going to create a circle by hitting C holding down shift and drawing out a small circle and I'm going to call that torch tip let's zoom in on it so we can see come to its shape properties uh, and instead of fill I want outline and again I'm going to use airbrush I'm going to set the width to 25 and then I want to set the middle of that to about 90 just to sharpen it up make sure I've selected additive blend to get it really hot and I'm going to come to the stroke and I'm going to use color over stroke let's twirl that open I'm going to throw that one away set this color to be 0 0.5 0 0.75 and 1 I'm going to option drag that to the left then I'm going to option drag it again to the middle and I'm going to set the color to yellow so 1 1 and 0.5 I don't want it to be too yellow like that and again I'm going to come to the jitter and I'm going to set that to 60 so now we've got that nice little sort of optical effect of those circles overlapping at the moment that's not animating it's just stuck there like a, a lemon uh, so I'm going to uh, come to the jitter and I'm going to add a behavior and it's going to be a wriggle uh, set the amount to 150 the apply mode to add and subtract increase the speed which is the frequency and now that'll flicker around in a satisfying way and I want to trim it to end at 150 and I, again I want to attach that to the particles so I'm going to add a link behavior and again attach it to those blurry sparks also want to come to its properties and again exclude it from the lighting and you can see the difference that that makes one more thing I'm going to duplicate that and I want to make a sort of little glow that happens around the outside of that cutter I'm going to come to the style increase the width to 100 and I just want to reduce the opacity so I'm going to come here click on that top tab and set the opacity down to 20 uh, and the reason I've done it there is I want to use the uh, layer opacity to get it to uh, flicker uh, so I'm going to add a randomize behavior to that um, set the randomize to 50 
Uh, and I'm going to come to the properties, set the blend mode to screen. And because that's a duplicate, that's already got the shading off as well. Something not quite right with that shape. Let's come to the style. I'm going to reduce the width a bit. There we go. That looks better. Right. So that was all quite laborious uh, and you're thinking, is this tutorial ever going to end? But actually, we've done the hard part. We've set up the basis of everything. We're going to take a break there and in part two, we'll come back and finish off the whole animation.